Hey, welcome back friends. If you want to join the friends, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Today, I'm going to be going over bank standards. Now, these are a pretty interesting technology that they released with Goblin Technologies. And honestly, they are a relatively efficient way of getting components and parts. Uh, but it is randomized, so it is kind of hard to tell exactly how much it is worth. Uh, but that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going over an analysis of it as well as exactly how to do it. And I figured I should start out with how to make these bank standards to start off with. Now, the first thing you're going to do is to actually unlock them. They are part of the Goblin Tech Tree, so that means you are going to have to make it down to Tier 3 as you can see right here. Uh, I would recommend also unlocking the mechanized chinchampas because they are a profitable method of making a little bit of money from bank standards. So what you're going to want to do, because you have to have something from Tier 1 before you can unlock Tier 2, and you have to have something from Tier 2 before you unlock Tier 3. Uh, you're going to be unlocking the components, uh, you're going to unlock mechanized chinchampas and bank standards. This is going to cost you about 70 goblin currency, so it's going to take you about 3-3.5 three, three days worth of just waiting around to actually get enough of that goblin currency. You do get goblin currency by doing tasks. All you do is click on tasks and go to goblins, and it, it will have a decent amount of tasks. When you first start off, you only have one, and then it unlocks another one every 12 hours. Uh, so all you do is, say, hand in 80 deflecting components. So I don't really have a whole big use of deflecting components, so let's go ahead and hand those in, and you will get either 10 or 15 currency. I currently have goblin as my preferred, uh, preferred type of tech tree. So I get 15, but if you chose the Dwarven over Goblin, you will only get 10. So it could be up to 7 different tasks that you have to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn in simple parts, assuming I actually have enough, because uh, that's also another really easy task. Uh, these are not that hard to actually accomplish, but uh, I just don't have them on hand. But as you can see, uh, that's all you have to do to complete the tasks, and then go ahead and unlock bank, bank standards. So... Once you get the ability to actually make bank standards, uh, it's the same as any other device. You just go into this and make them. They do require one adamant bar as well as 10 refined components. Uh, and that's going to make you one of them a piece. I do currently have five adamant bars. And I had some uh, refined components already. But if you don't already have refined components, the way of getting refined components is to make a junk refiner. That's going to cost you some junk crafted parts and a rune bar. Uh, go ahead and make one of those. And then from there, all you're going to have to do is refine down some more junk. Uh, it costs you 100 junk per refined component. So you are going to be using quite a bit of junk, but as you can see by my current amount that I have, I have over 2 million junk. So honestly, if you're disassembling things at a regular basis, you're going to have more than enough junk. And you just refine it down. Uh, the amount that you can actually refine per junk refiner is based on your invention level. So the higher invention level you have, the more refined components you will get. And the more cost efficient it is to actually use the junk refiners. So keep that in mind. Uh, it may be worth leveling up your invention a little bit before doing this. But we're going to go ahead and get into the analysis of 300 bank standards. Luckily, I did find a Reddit post that had 300 of them. We're going to go ahead and analyze exactly how much each bank standard is worth and how much profit you can actually make from these. I do want to give a quick shout out to RS Cord on Reddit. Uh, this is a huge help to actually have the stats for how many components and parts that he actually got from 304 bank standards. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to do this analysis instead of just trying to do this all myself. I think it's about 15 hours worth of using bank standards. So thank you very much for actually doing this for me instead of me having to do it myself. Uh, that being said, uh, you can go ahead and look at the graph yourself. But as you can see, the common parts, uh, you get quite a few common parts. Uh, it's probably anywhere from about 1,500 to 2,000 on average that you're going to be getting of common parts in 300. Uh, the uncommons, you do get about 50 to 60 of those in 300 bank standards. Uh, and the rare parts or rare components, you don't really get any of these. 
Uh, for the sake of this guide, I am going to be completely throwing out the rare components because they're so rare and it's variable the value that they actually have. Uh, some, like Brassardian, uh, they are worth almost nothing, whereas Noxious components are worth quite a bit of money. Uh, so that's going to be a large volatility in it. It's probably not going to add much value to bank standards. But it is a nice cool thing that could happen. You could get a free Noxious component. I do also want to mention the five different items that we're going to be making where I am thinking that there are going to be components or parts that have some sort of value to them. Uh, I am just throwing out anything that does not have a direct GE value. That means that there is going to be more value than what I'm going to be putting on to all of these parts and components just because uh, they are indefinite values. There's no way of actually quantifying what they are. Either you want them or you don't. Uh, you have to decide that for yourself. But the five things that are actually worth GP and very good GP are going to be the Mechanized Chinchampas, the Crystal Tool Siphons, the Divine Charges, uh, that could be empty or the non-empty version. I'm just going to be using empty for this because it makes it a little bit easier to actually source out how much a simple component is worth or a simple part. Uh, equipment siphons and augmenters. All these are directly sellable to the GE, which means that you get pure GP profit from them. Breaking these items down even further, we can figure out which parts and components actually have a GE value as well. Uh, so simple parts are going to have the GE value from the divine charges. The imbued parts are going to be having a value from the crystal tool siphons. Precious components and dexterous components are going to be having a value from the equipment siphons. Living components and plated parts are going to be valued by the mechanized chinchampas. And enhancing components and powerful components are going to be evaluated by how much an augmenter is worth. I'm going to start out with two different recipes. Both of these have one part or component that is actually worth some money. Uh, the divine charges are obviously the easiest. You need 20 of them to make one divine charge. So it's very easy math. Just cost of divine charge divided by amount of simple parts you get 590 GP as the value of one simple part so very nice there uh, it's actually a little bit more than I was expecting on the other hand crystal tool siphon is a little bit variable uh, you can see that clear parts are a part of the recipe but from my experience clear parts are never an issue you never have not enough of them uh, Unfortunately, crystal parts, we don't actually get any crystal parts from the bank standards. That's one of the only parts that you actually do not get, unfortunately, along with refined components. So you can't actually get any crystal parts from here. So we're going to have to actually get the value of imbued components purely at cost basis. This is just going to be how much it costs to get them, not including time or anything like that. Uh, the cost at cost of imbued components is going to be 50,000 GP from battle staves. Uh, this is going to be the best way of actually getting imbued components in my opinion and I believe that they actually have that value. Uh, also gives us a nice evaluation of how much crystal parts are worth. They're worth about 70,000 GP a piece. Uh, in case if I ever need that in the future that is very useful to know. Next up is going to be the equipment siphons. Seeing as how we already know the cost of a simple part, we can just take that out of the value already. And that leaves us with about 210,000 GP of total cost that is not evaluated for already. And seeing as how components are dropped at a relatively similar rate, we can just assume that you're going to have a similar amount of dexterous and precise components. So each of them are worth about 10% of that or 21,000 GP a piece. Mechanized chinchampas are a little bit more complicated because there's two different parts and components that are actually have some sort of value to them. Uh, the plated parts are going to be having a value because there's not really a good source of plated parts and you are going to be on average pretty low on plated parts from my experience. Uh, and living components are also going to have a value. You're going to have more than enough plated parts to actually compensate for the living components so I'm just going to make it so that the plated parts are going to be an at cost type of thing and then if you want to use up the rest of your plated parts you're just going to need to get more living components from another source so the at cost cost of plated parts are going to be about 1500 gp each from steel or iron plate legs that seems to be the most efficient way of actually getting plated parts 
And if you're going for living components, that's going to leave all of the actual profit from Mechanized and Champas onto the living components, which means you get about 45,000 GP for each living component. So very nice there. They're worth quite a bit of money. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really a good way of farming them up quickly. Otherwise, they would be a really good money-making method. Uh, but from these bank standards, uh, they're actually worth quite a bit of money, uh, pretty close to how much an imbued component is worth. And last but not least, we have Augmenters. Uh, augmenters are another really finicky one. Uh, I kind of just threw out all the parts. I know that you get plenty of flexible and tensile parts, so that's not a concern at all. Uh, base parts are sometimes a concern depending on what you're actually making. I believe that base parts are used in a couple of other devices or gizmos, so they do have some sort of value, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to assume that they don't have a value. Uh, it's going to not really change up the pricing that you're going to be making from the bank standards that much, if at all. Uh, so just throw out base parts as well. Uh, which leaves enhancing and powerful components. Uh, you do have to take out the cost of the divine energy, obviously, but after that, it leaves powerful components having 37,000 GP cost efficiency, and the enhancing components are going to be worth about 32,000 GP each. And that brings us to the fun part, the total profit that you're actually going to be making from these bank standards. Uh, so I'm just going to go over the list of different parts and components and how much you're going to be making from each of them. Simple parts are going to get you just over 1 million GP. Plated parts are going to be 2.5 million GP. Living components are going to be about 2 and 3 quarters million GP. Precious components are going to be 1 and 1 quarter million GP. Same with dexterous, 1 and 1 quarter million GP. Powerful components are going to be 2 and 1 quarter million GP. Enhancing components are going to be 1 and 3 quarters to 2 million GP. And imbued components are going to be an insane 3 million GP that you're going to be making from these 300 loot that we have. That gets a net income of 15,900,000. You do have to take into account the cost of actually making 300 bank standards from the... Uh, basically making the bank standards because they do cost an adamant bar as well as costing... Uh, some refined components, which you obviously have to make yourself. And it's going to be a little bit over 5 million GP of costs for a total profit of 10.8 million GP. Uh, it did take about 15 hours to make all of these and to break them all down. Uh, you do have to stand in a bank for 15 hours, so hopefully you had something to do for 15 hours and it wasn't just random waste of time. But you do have a total profit per hour of 720,000 GP per hour. Now this seems like a really low amount, but you have to think about it as basically lossless money. You're going to be making 700,000 GP per hour on top of whatever you'd be making if you're standing at a bank, or if you're training up a skill that you can stand at a bank, you're just getting an additional free 700,000 GP. This is not including any of the parts or components that do not have a direct GP cost as well. I did not take into account anything such as precise components that are used in Precise 4 Equilibrium 2. Those, in my opinion, have a cost. Anything to make gizmos, I think that those are worth money as well. You are probably actually more efficiently uh, going to be thinking about a 1 million to 1.5 million GP per hour that you're going to be making just from saving money trying to go for all these parts and components that you use in your everyday just RuneScape career. So definitely worth a lot of money and definitely worth doing in my opinion. Hopefully you all enjoyed that and it helped somebody out decide whether or not it's worth using bank standards to you. If it did help you, go ahead and hit that like button down below. It shows me a lot of the support and helps other people see it as well. Uh, also hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future content and leave a comment if you have anything to say. As always though, have a good one.